Hey, how's it going everybody? Hope you all had a good week. Um, wanna make a quick video today. I have a little uh, assortment of pre-war cards that I wanna show you. Um, so we'll get started with what's in front of you. These are T204s, uh, also known as Ramleys. Um, that's because of, that's the name of the brand of cigarette that they came with. Um, they also came with another brand called TTT. Um, so the cards with those backs are very expensive. You don't see them a lot. Almost all of them that, that you're going to find have this Ramley back. Uh, these were made in 1909. Uh, there's 121 different cards in the set. Um, by far the most expensive card is the Walter Johnson card. Um, there's a few other Hall of Famers. There's a Jesse Burkett card, a Willie Keeler card. Um, not the most popular set, uh, mainly because compared to other sets at that time, there aren't a lot of the big names. There's no Christy Mathewson, there's no Ty Cobb, there's no Honus Wagner. Um, but I think they're pretty cool looking cards. They all, uh, they have the, this gilded gold border with this kind of ornate design. And, you know, a photograph of the player in this oval frame in the middle. Um, and the name, position, and team on the bottom. Um, you can also find, uh, there, in the set, there's six cards that, that come with a square frame instead of this oval frame. Um, those are very rare, hard to find, and those all have blank backs. Um, so, another reason that people don't tend to like this set as much as others is that, uh, it's very expensive. Even these common players, you're, you're going to have to pay a little more for these. Um, so this one here is Pat Donahue. Um, when I bought this card, it was slabbed by SGC and it said Jigs Donahue on it. Uh, I didn't know a lot about the player. I, when I got home, I did a little research and I discovered that, uh, the player on the card is actually Pat Donahue and Jigs Donahue was his brother. Um, so, uh, I sent an email to SGC and explained what I had found and, Sent the card back in and they re-slabbed it and corrected it for free. So that's Pat Donahue. This is um, Heine Wagner. This is a PSA three and a half. Kind of a cool looking card, I think. And then this is Jake Stahl. And this is the SGC one and a half. Pretty low grade card, but actually I think it has decent eye appeal for a one and a half. Uh, it's not in bad shape. Um, all right, so that is the T204s. Next up, we have T201s, Mecca Cigarettes Double Folders. Um, these were made in 1911. Um, there's 50 cards in this set. These are um, color lithographs. Um, and... As you can see on the back there, there's the top half there is a, an upside down player. So what these were, what you were meant to do with these is kind of fold over the back and then you have a second player. Um, so this one is Tris Speaker on the front and who's on the back there? Gardner. That's Larry Gardner on the back. Um, I'm sorry, Earl Gardner on the back. Um, so these also have stats, which is pretty cool. They came with packs of Mecca cigarettes. Um, unlike the Ramleys, there's a lot of big names in this set, uh, just 50 cards, but there, you know, you'll find, um, Chief Bender, Mordecai Brown, Ty Cobb, Walter Johnson, Christy Mathewson, um, Tris Speaker, Eddie Collins, lots of big names. Um, and another nice thing about this set is that they're not really very expensive. You can find these relatively cheap, um. I actually just looked really quickly on eBay and for less than 150 bucks, um, and which I realize is expensive, but for, for a set from 1911 with Hall of Famers, for under 150 bucks, you can get, uh, there's a whole bunch of Hall of Famers um, on eBay. Uh, and uh, I'm going to do another video, hopefully soon, on collecting pre-war cards on a budget. Um, and this is definitely one of the sets that I'm going to focus on. There's a lot of big names. I think they're pretty nice looking cards and reasonably priced compared to other sets from this time. 
All right, so that's the Trist speaker. I also have um, ungraded. This is an Eddie Sakat and um, John Thony also on the back there. All right, so that's T201s. Next up, I have this E95 Philadelphia Caramel Bill Kerrigan card. And this card is a SGC1. Um, this card is just beat to hell. I don't remember where I got this card. Um, I have no idea where I got this from. Uh, but although this card looks pretty horrible, this is actually a very nice set. And as you can see on the back there, um, try to get the glare off there. Uh, it's 25 cards in the set, and there's some big names. Uh, Honus Wagner, Chief Bender, Ty Cobb. Um, Sam Crawford, Christy Mathewson, um, Eddie Plank, uh, that's actually a really cool card, the Eddie Plank card. It's the same uh, portrait as his T206 card, but the T206 card is exceedingly uh, rare and expensive. I've actually been looking for the E95 uh, Plank card for my collection. Um, so this is uh, Bill Kerrigan. Uh, from the E95 set. Looking to find uh, some more E95s for my collection. Hopefully in better condition than that. Uh, that card. Next up, this is a 1925 Exhibits Red Ruffin card, and this is graded at SGC 4. Um, this was made by Exhibits Supply Company, uh, which I think was based out of Chicago. And these are postcard size cards that um, were sold in vending machines. Uh, the first set was made in 1921, and they made cards through the 60s. Um, so there's a lot of different sets. Obviously, the earlier ones are more expensive. Um, there's a, a number of Babe Ruth cards from the 20s. Um, and... The big card from this set from 1925 is the Lou Gehrig card, which is his rookie. Um, up until a couple of years ago, you could get that card for, it still was pretty expensive, but in the past couple of years, that price of that card has just skyrocketed. Um, you know, 50, 60, 70,000 bucks. Um, so that's pretty cool. The reason that I was searching for this card is I was trying, or I am trying to put together a set of, um, Every player who ever played for the Red Sox who's in the Hall of Fame, I wanted to get a card of them in a Red Sox uniform. And Red Ruffing, who obviously um, played for most of his career on the Yankees, uh, did play for the Red Sox. And this is actually his second year card. There's a card that was made in 1924 uh, by Diaz Cigarettes. It's a Cuban card, uh, which w would be his rookie card. Um, I've never actually seen one. They're very rare. Uh, it would be very expensive if you could find one. So I started looking for this, and I actually had some trouble finding this card, but eventually did find one on eBay. Uh, it was not graded when I got it. Um, so I purchased it and sent it off to SGC, and they slabbed it. These are all blank backs. Um, actually, Exhibit does have some that have a postcard back on them, but uh, this one's blank back. Um, the uh, 1920s exhibits cards, you can actually get a lot of Hall of Famers uh, for a reasonable price. This is another set I'm going to talk about when I do my video on um, pre-war cards on a budget. Um, some people don't care for the larger oversized cards, but you can really get some, some big name Hall of Famers with some cool poses for relatively inexpensive. Um, Alright, so this is the 1925 exhibits uh, Red Ruffin card. Okay, next up, this is a 1910 F.A. George brand uh, postcard um, of the Red Sox, uh, Boston Red Sox team from 1910. Um, I bought this at the Chantilly show a couple of years ago, um, and I saw this uh, in a guy's case, and normally I would prefer to get something in better condition. This is not in good shape, you can see the obvious flaws. There's got a, a pinhole on the right side there. Um, paper loss on the front. 
the back uh, is kind of destroyed. Uh, obviously, this is postally used. It was sent, um, maybe glued in a scrapbook or something. Um, but anyhow, I saw this and I had never seen this postcard before. Um, you know, sometimes you just have to buy something uh, when you see it. Or you may not get an opportunity again when you're talking about stuff like this. Now uh, there's some pinholes on the top there too. Um, but anyhow, uh, I thought even in this condition, I thought it was a pretty cool looking postcard. I was happy to get it. I've only ever seen a few of these. Um, didn't pay a ton for this. In better condition, you'd pay it quite a bit. So, all right, 1910 F.A. George postcard. And last but not least, um, this is a 1912 technical book publishing postcard. Uh, this is a pretty rare postcard. I've only ever seen a few of these. Um, the back is actually a scorecard for the 1912 World Series between New York and Boston uh, that Boston won. Um, so there's a matching postcard um, with the New York Giants uh, team on it, um, which is pretty cool with Christy Matthews and some other great players. This one has uh, Tris Speaker, Joe Wood, Harry Hooper. Um, so anyhow, I bought this off of um, Net54. Someone posted it for sale and I saw it and I didn't even try to negotiate. I thought the price was fair. I didn't want someone else to snatch it up. I've only ever seen one other one of these in person anyway. Um, not a whole lot of them, so I was happy to get it. Uh, not in great shape. You can see on the, or maybe if it'll focus, you can see there's some paper loss on the top there on both sides. That was tape. It was taped into something. Um, there you go. And then on the bottom there, there's a little pencil writing in the corner there. But um, pretty cool looking postcard. I like the pose. And uh, like I said, uh, not the easiest one to find. There's one that's been on eBay for a while. Uh, I believe it's still there. Uh, and I think the asking price is 5000 bucks, which is crazy. It's not worth anywhere near that. But, um, you know, pretty rare postcard. So. All right, that's it for today. I um, have some more videos I hope to make in the next week and uh, purchased a very cool item on eBay that I'm looking forward to receiving and I'll uh, show you that when it comes in. Uh, hope you all have a good rest of your weekend and uh, I'll talk to you soon. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, and comment. Thanks a lot. Bye.